a while back, I made a video talking a little bit about Penny's Big Breakaway. I emphasized what a great game it was. I love the platforming. I love the design. I love the levels. I love, like, the world of Penny's Big Breakaway. And immediately, when I released that video, Ah, that's not a Nintendo exclusive! You know, like, I got a lot of comments from people making fun of me under the assumption that I was not aware that Penny's Big Breakaway was available on other platforms. And uh, this kind of goes into what I uh, what have been saying for a long time, in that uh, there is this weird mindset among people who watch the channel that, like, I don't like other games simply for not being on Nintendo hardware, when that's really not true at all, right? Uh, I like games for being good, right? I would be perfectly fine with owning another piece of hardware if it had good games on it. But the reality is that simply isn't the case, ever, right? The majority of games on other platforms are simply not very good. And with Penny's Big Breakaway, you know, with, with games like that, like, it's becoming more and more apparent to me that a lot of multi-plat games, a lot of third-party games, are coming to Switch, and that they are very, very good. Do you expect me not to acknowledge that games like Penny's Big Breakaway, like Shin Megami Tensei V, like Unicorn Overlord? No. Like, I have always advocated for good third-party games on Nintendo Switch, right? Really, the idea that, like, I'm biased towards Nintendo is completely unwarranted. I, I've always advocated for these kind of games. Now, the thing about Penny's Big Breakaway, uh, the thing I've, I've noticed over the past couple of weeks, uh, and this has been true since the Nintendo Direct. I've been meaning to talk about this for a while. The thing that I noticed was that a lot of people are under the assumption that because the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X are newer platforms that games like Penny's Big Breakaway, games like Shin Megami Tensei V, games like Unicorn Overlord are going to do better on those other platforms, right? These are going to do gangbusters on PC while Nintendo Switch, like, is a dead last, right? People really think that these games are going to do better on other platforms than they are on Nintendo Switch. And I think, upon, like, consideration, upon looking at all the evidence, upon, like, uh, you know, looking at how well Penny's Big Breakaway is doing on Switch, looking at Shin Megami Tensei V and its history as a timed ex Nintendo exclusive for four years, looking at, you know, Unicorn Overlord and how well that's doing on Nintendo Switch, like, I think it's not true. Like, all three of those multi-flat games are going to do the best on Nintendo Switch, right? And that, to me, is a really, really big indication of where things are going. It's something that people aren't talking about, is that the days of people primarily playing third-party games on other platforms is over, right? Not that it was ever really true to begin with, but there was, like, a very big push to kind of, to kind of create this narrative that people only buy Nintendo hardware for the first-party stuff. Like, oh, man, Nintendo should just leave the hardware space because nobody, nobody likes their hardware, right? That's been the persistent narrative for the past while, right? Uh, leading up to SMT5 uh, Vengeance's release. Is, is SMT5 Vengeance or SMT Vengeance? Well, anyway, looking, leading up to SMT5's Vengeance's release, like, there was a lot of talk about, like, oh, I, I can't wait to play this game on a real platform. I can't wait to play this with better visuals and a higher frame rate. And I realized, you know, uh, leading up to release, uh, that there is no way that other... Uh, the other versions of the game do better than the, Nintendo, than the Nintendo one, right? Because the base game has been a Nintendo exclusive for so long. There, uh, you know, the established fan base is on there. People like the Nintendo Switch version. People want to support the Nintendo Switch version. Like, there's nothing really wrong with it. But all of the complaints about SMT5 uh, essentially came from people who desperately, desperately did not want to play the Nintendo. But those people are a very, very vocal minority, right? They don't speak for the majority of people at all, right? The people who are going to switch platforms just because SMT5 is 
is multi plat now, uh, they have to be they have to be a minority, right? There aren't going to be a lot of people that do that. This game was announced in a Nintendo Direct, right? This game does have a long history with, with Nintendo, right? The people who religiously claim that uh, these games don't belong on Nintendo platforms, like, they have to be a vocal minority. I I don't see SMT5 engines doing well on other platforms at all, especially since these are the people who spent the past four years pretending the game was crap, right? That is the situation as I see it, right? SMT5 has already done very well on Nintendo Switch, and just seeing it, like, go multiplayer, it's disappointing, right? But... I think the game is still doing going to do better on Nintendo platforms than other ones. And then you have Unicorn Overlord, right? You know, right now, everyone is trying to say that, like, oh, this is going to be the game that kills Fire Emblem. You know, completely underestimating Fire Emblem's, Fire Emblem's relevancy and just how well, how much it can do in a handful of years, right? It took VanillaWare, like, seven years to put this out, you know, this one game. You know, meanwhile, we get, like, a Fire Emblem game every three years, right? You know, <laughs> you'll get two Fire Emblem games, and then wait another two years, and you'll get, like, three. Compared to, like, Vanilla Wear, where you have to wait forever to get a new release, right? Like, they do not have a good turnaround time at all there, right? You know, I like the games, but they they really are struggling putting things out on time, right? Within a reasonable time frame, right? Uh... Vanilla Wear, Unicorn Overlord is interesting because looking at that game, looking at how much of a ripoff it is of Fire Emblem and Ogre Battle, uh, two very, two series that have a very long history on Nintendo platforms. Like, to me, it couldn't be more obvious that Unicorn Overlord, with its style, with its design, with its uh, what it's trying to accomplish, like, it's mostly going to appeal to Nintendo fans, right? No, no fan of other platforms are going to look at Unicorn Overlord and just be like, oh, that's the, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. They have no, they have no tolerance for, like, stylized visuals or anime aesthetics or, or, like, uh, this kind of real-time strategy combat. Like, uh, it's going to look, like, boring to them, right? Because they don't understand what Unicorn Overlord is trying to do. They don't understand what makes the game compelling. But, you know, meanwhile, Fire Emblem fans understand, you know, real-time strategy fans understand, you know, like uh, Ogre Battle fans understand, right? You know, I can argue that Ogre, uh, Unicorn Overlord, it, it, it's not as good as Fire Emblem Engage. It's not as good as Pikmin 4. It's not as, it's not as good as a lot of other uh, Nintendo games. But, you know, it's still very, very interesting that they decided to do this, right? Because Ogre Battle is an interesting, uh, it's an interesting franchise that uh, has become stagnant, right? Uh, it's one of those, like, I would say it's one of the most hardcore RPG series on, like, older Nintendo platforms, right? You know, uh, Ogre Battle 64 is probably one of the best RPGs on N64, right? You don't see a lot of people talk about it because it's so obscure, but it does exist, right? Uh, you know, I, I played March of the Black Queen recently. I never finished it, but I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, playing Unicorn Overlord, yeah, I don't think it's on the same level as those games. I really miss, like, the dark tone. Those games are really, really, well, really, really notorious for being, like, incredibly dark. But uh, playing Unicorn Overlord, it feels a lot more basic, a lot more fire on the mission. I wonder if that's going to lead to the game being more popular than Ogre Battle ever was, but we'll have to see. Um, but yeah. My belief, considering, like, the demo is Nintendo Switch exclusive, considering, like, uh, you know, it was revealed in Nintendo Direct, considering, like, how uh, how much people are talking about this, like, I think it's safe to say that Unicorn Overlord is going to do the best on Nintendo Switch. And this is a big deal, because it proves that the majority of games that come out are going to do the best on Nintendo Switch, right? All three of these, like, random releases, all of which are in completely different genres, have completely different styles, have, like, completely different, like, focuses and, like, appeal to different people, right? Like, all of these games are going to do the best on Nintendo Switch. The only games that excel on Nintendo Switch, uh, that, uh, that excel on other platforms, are games that heavily rely on uh, sabotaging the Nintendo Switch version. Right, we saw this with Mortal Kombat One. We saw this with Hogwarts Legacy. We saw this with like a lot of third-party games last year. Right, 
The reality is you essentially have a handful of Western IPs that are uh, driving console sales, you know, Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, stuff like that. Uh, a handful of Western gaming IPs that drive console sales. And uh, those are the those games are the reason that like anybody cares about those platforms at all. Right. Like outside of those very scant few projects. Right. There is nothing coming out on PS5 or Xbox Series X. And I uh, I don't I do think people really need to start acknowledging the fact that even now, seven years after release, the Nintendo Switch is still dominating the competition, right? There's been this very persistent narrative for the past couple of years that the Switch is on the way out, that it's fading away, that it's not as popular as it once was, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The Switch is still exceedingly popular. 